I really felt like a doctor today. It feels so good to feel like a doctor and to be a doctor. I'm just so excited that this is my job. and I'm a doctor living and working in London. Actually, I've been a doctor for about 30 days exactly. And in today's video, I wanna take you along with me across an entire week of me working in the hospital as a doctor, hopefully to give you watching a better insight into what the life of a doctor is like. I feel like I said doctor way too many times. Let's get into it. Let's get some scrubs. Pretty nice day today, considering it's September. Now I don't usually leave this early, but I usually leave the house at about 8 to 10, somewhere around there. All right, good morning everyone. So we're in the car on the way to work now. Basically, like I said, I've been a doctor for about a month and there's been quite a few highs, quite a few lows. It's been a mixed bag depending on where I've been, to be honest. But for the last couple of weeks, I've had many on-call shifts, which means I've been working 12 hours a day, coming home at like 9 p.m., feeling really, really tired, just going straight to sleep to begin work again tomorrow. And I've also had several weekends, which have also been quite tiring, many days working in a row on the weekend. So I feel like I haven't really had much time to document my experience as a doctor so far. But this week, I'm working Monday to Friday, nine to five. I know. I'm as surprised as you are. So I can actually take advantage of my evenings, I can go to the gym, I can see my friends, I can actually do things that I want to do, film these videos, etc. So that's what we're gonna do this week. So my drive in the morning to the hospital really isn't that long, it's about 15 minutes or so, but I find that it's such great relaxation, listening to music in the morning or just reflecting about the day that I just had. Um, and kind of calming my nerves and giving myself a reset before I step into the hospital for a day of work. So, I've arrived. Oh God. I'm actually a little bit early, go me. I have a little bit of time, so I'm gonna call my girlfriend really quick, catch up with her for the morning. Hi, sweetie, good morning. How are you? I'm good. When I woke up, it looked like it was gonna be... All right, now for a pretty short walk to the hospital and for my first rotation as a doctor in my F1 year, I'm starting on geriatrics or care of the elderly. So in the current population and demographic that we are in, that tends to be for patients above the age of 80 years old. And I was told by many of my seniors who had already been doctors for a couple of years that geriatrics would be a great rotation to start on because it has a lot of medicine. So you get to learn a lot of how to solve common problems that you might see in patients in the hospital. And I feel like so far that's definitely been true. And yeah, I guess there's not much left to say. I'm gonna go in now at around 8.30, 9 a.m. And we'll see when I get off. Catch you guys soon. Peace. And that's it. I'm gonna go make a coffee and then head to the doctor's office. Now, before we continue on with the day, I wanna take a quick moment to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Notability. Notability is the best note-taking app available on the iPad, hands down. If you've been following the channel for some time, then you know that I've been using Notability for years and years and years. I've made multiple videos about it, how I use it to organize my life, how I used it in my USMLE step one studying, how I used it throughout medical school. It's been present for a long time. Now, I've used Notability to make hundreds and literally hundreds and hundreds of notes over the years. They're colorful, organized and, in my opinion, beautiful notes that I can very easily refer to and find whenever I need because they're so well organized. This is an example of a note that I made back in second year of medical school, and it's really nice to see some of the things show up in my day-to-day -day life that I learned about so long ago. Over here on the side, I have all my notes very neatly organized into Kings year one through five, my life as a doctor, and also my USMLE step one years as well. So, you know, in each one of these, we've got tons and tons of notes. I've, like, literally, this is 
is so long. And you know, I've also got all of my tables over here that you can move around and edit really easily. Of course, you can document and annotate on those tables. So like I said, on the side here, everything is really nicely organized. So for example, we have the big folder of USMLE. And then within that, we have Sketchy Farm, Sketchy Micro. And within that, we have different sections, bacteria, fungi, parasites. And then within bacteria, we have all these different pages over here, each one annotated with its original image, screenshots of a textbook, and even more annotations. But of course, you can just import lecture slides in their whole, and you can annotate on them as you wish. Now, one of the truly amazing features about Notability for students is their new gallery feature. This gallery is amazing. What it allows you to do is take notes or templates that other people have made and then import them into your own Notability so that you can customize them and use them as you want. So for example, there's a weekly planner here and you can save that template and import it into your own Notability and start keeping a digital diary instead of, you know, a physical one if you want. Now, not only can you look at all these templates that people have made, use them for inspiration or download them and then use them in your own Notability, you can also look at other people's notes. So these are neat, colorful notes that somebody has already made about ischemia. And lo and behold, if you look hard enough, you'll find that I've uploaded a bunch of my own notes over here that you can go browse and you can download and you can insert into your own Notability if you want. Now Notability has a ton of great features. I don't have time to show them all to you. One thing that I remember wishing that I had back in the University of Toronto was being able to record the lecture or tutorial that I was listening to and then being able to play back that lecture synced with the notes and annotations that I made at the time when I was listening to it. And you can do that so easily with Notability by just hitting this little button over here. If we play back this recording, it'll actually show me drawing this annotation at the same time as it was happening in the recording of the lecture. Notability really cares about their students, making it free to use for any educational institutions that run their iPads through Apple School Manager. And they're even running a back to school offer for 50% off of your first year of using Notability Plus using the code Notability Karma. You can find the link to that in the description down below. This offer ends October 31st. So make sure you get that while you can. Notability is free to download and try with Notability Plus being $11.99 for the entire year. That's literally $1 a month to be able to use this app on a daily basis and have all of your notes neatly organized with all these colorful and useful tools. It's a no brainer to me. I stand by Notability being one of the best purchases that I ever made. It's gotten me through so much of my time in medical school and beyond. I'm going to be a paying customer for a long time to come. If you're interested in Notability and want to try it out for yourself, make sure you click that link in the description down below for 50% off of your first year. All right, now let's get back to the vlog. All right, team, got my lunch. I'm actually heading to a radiology meeting now. So we're gonna eat food whilst looking at scans, CTs, MRIs, etc. We've just finished that radiology meeting. Um, while I was half eating lunch, half trying to figure out what the hell was going on on all of those MRI scans and CT scans. I find that having lunch with some teaching going on is actually really helpful because it kind of feels like I'm at home watching an episode of some Netflix show. You're eating while doing something useful at work. Obviously, you can't watch Netflix at work, so a lecture on cardiology and the elderly will have to do. I wasn't there for very long because I showed up late. So I was documenting upstairs and grabbing food. So I've just come to the doctor's mess which has this really nice outdoor sort of area. So yeah, I've come out here to enjoy the weather and <laughs> just eat outside. This morning has been really great, actually. I'm seeing patients on my own and then running my thoughts. Chair almost broke. My thoughts and my plans uh, right by my senior. And then they can comment on whether they think that's a good plan or answer my questions or tell me, actually, no, this is better, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, thankfully no one is really unwell like they have been in previous weeks everyone's been fine all right team that's it i've got myself some coffee and some sparkling water to keep me going for the afternoon yeah i'm just gonna head upstairs get back to it all right and that is it we are done leaving at 6 30 6 40 which is not ideal but it is what it is I'm gonna do a quick quick shop and then head to the car. You know, I was so excited to be finishing at five this week, as opposed to being on call and finishing at like eight, 8.30. I was like, yeah, I'll get my life back, be able to go to the gym, do all kinds of fun stuff in the evenings. I guess 6.30 is an improvement. It's not as bad as it could be. 
There's definitely been worse and I'm sure there will be worse. We'll take the small wins when we get them. An extra hour and a half in my day today. Looking forward to catching up with an old friend this evening from Toronto. You guys might remember him from some older videos. Let's see what it tastes like. Give your honest opinion. Like off camera? <laughs> <laughs> Very average. <laughs> And then if I've got time, but I'm probably asking for too much, playing video games with my sister. But we'll see, one step at a time. Oh, we made it. Shift one of five over. We're back in the car, ready to get some good rest and enjoy whatever we have left of this evening. Honestly, pretty great day. I'll tell you about it as we drive home. Let's go home. I realized that I didn't really have time to tell you guys how my day was. So I was running around like a headless chicken, being super busy. But basically, yeah, when I first started my job as a doctor, I would do a lot of following around the more senior doctors, typing up the notes on the computer and kind of executing the plan that they would tell me to do. Now, there's a lot more of me seeing my own patients, examining them myself, making sure they're okay, coming up with a little bit of a plan of what I think might be best or what I want to do for them. And then running that by my senior, and making sure that you know it's a good plan um, and executing it then. We had a couple of uh, good F1 tasks today, a couple of PR exams or DR exams. These stand for per rectum or digital rectal exams, which is usually allocated to the F1 or the least senior person on the ward, and that's me. In hospital medicine, there's kind of a, a classic scenario where at 5 p.m. when you're supposed to go home, someone's gonna become ill or someone's gonna become unwell. And that happened today, I think it was 4.58, and one of the nurses comes into the doctor's office and says that someone is throwing up blood or they're having an episode of hematemesis or hematemesis, however you wanna pronounce it. It wasn't a patient I was looking after, but I went to help deal with that. And so yeah, we finished quite late today at about 6.40, but tomorrow, mark my words, okay? tomorrow no matter how late I finish I'm going to the gym getting back into the gym it is official can't let this doctor life take over completely and make me miss out on my gym sessions because man needs to be swole and these arms are not big enough right now but anyway today was a good day good start to the week slowly slowly getting more confident and more comfortable as a doctor which is absolutely mad to say whenever someone says dr. karma or dr. K can you go do this or go do that I'm like Dr. K, that's me. Still feels good to hear. Very, very good. I'm rambling now. I'm gonna go home and I'll see you there. All right, so I made it home and my friend who we're gonna call from the University of Toronto, this guy right over here, Arsalan Dinesh. Let's young him back in 2017. Let's call him and see how he's doing. Arsalan! <laughs> Hey! How are you, I'm good, man. How are you? All right. So it's currently 9:40 p.m. Just had a very, very long catch-up with uh, with Arslan. We hadn't spoken in about six months. So there were a lot of life updates to go through, and then spoke to Alexia, my girlfriend. We do the Wordle together while sharing screen every day. It's kind of like our little ritual at the moment, which is very fun. I'm gonna get into bed, watch something, and sleep. But first, look at what arrived in the mail. Ah. How beautiful is that? Feels so good to have it in my hand. Definitely gonna frame it and put it up on my wall somewhere here. Very, very proud of this. All right, back in its safe space. And all right, I'm literally just gonna jump in the shower, get into bed and watch a couple of YouTube videos while I fall asleep, wake up and do it all again tomorrow. I'll see you then. team good morning day two has arrived today i've got my gym bag because we're going to be going to the gym after work no matter what i'm here and get here first didn't get to sleep much last night completely my fault i was up watching an hour-long youtube video of this video game elden ring I can't explain it. Anyways, didn't get to sleep as much as I would like. I think I'll try to sleep early tomorrow to make up for that. I'll probably be exhausted after the gym anyway, so. In the mornings here, I want to try and talk about something interesting in the medical field or in the hospital or in my day-to-day -day life that I might not have talked about before in my videos that I think 
you guys might find interesting. So today we're gonna to talk about handover. It's basically how medical professionals get a continuity of care between the day teams, the evening teams, and the night teams, because the same doctors and the same nurses don't work you know, 24 hours a day, but the hospital runs 24 hours a day. So you somehow need a way of effectively communicating information from shift to shift. So back when I was working on call, which means that you're working the 12 hour shifts from eight in the morning till eight at night, but the normal day job finishes at five. So you're on call for those evening hours at the time between five and 8 p.m. on a ward that might be different to your own to the one that you've been working on during the day. At 5 p.m., I would go to the next ward of where I'm going to be doing the evening cover. And I would find the doctors there from the day team and they would let me know about any jobs that were yet to be complete during the day or anything that needed to be checked later on in the evenings. For example, they might have done a blood test at 4 p.m., sent it to the lab, but the results haven't come back yet. So they might say to me, just keep an eye out for these blood tests. If the inflammatory markers come back raised, prescribe some antibiotics. Or they might say to me, you know, this patient has been quite unwell during the day. We've managed them and they're stable now, but they might be deterior they might deteriorate at some point or they might worsen. Just just be aware of them. Read a little bit about their history so that you know what's going on should something bad happen. So these are the types of tasks that are passed on. Occasionally you'll get things like, can you please take bloods for this patient, which traditionally are done by the day team, but sometimes it happens you don't have time or something came up or you need bloods urgently at the end of the day. So that's what happens at 5 p.m. handover. You've also got handover at eight in the morning and eight o'clock at night to communicate between the day teams and the night teams. Very similar story, except those ones are done in a big lecture hall. So you get representatives from all the different specialties in the hospital. I'm talking neuro, resp, elderly care medicine, gastro, psych, like literally everyone. And we all sit in this big hall and I think it's the medical registrar for the day or for the night, runs through the patients that are in A&E and, you know, says who needs to see them because we already know their initial problem and we know which specialty needs to see them next to help further their care. But otherwise, for the evening ones, you tend to just go to the ward of where you're going to be. And that's it. That was my quick lesson on handovers. I'm now going to call Alexia, have a quick uh, morning chat and catch up with her and then head into the hospital. So, heading to the car now. We've actually finished on time today, well, relatively speaking anyway. We're leaving at about 5.30, can't complain about that. And then remember what I said yesterday? Tomorrow, no matter how late I finish, I'm going to the gym. Today we're going to the gym. No matter what, no excuses, we're getting in the exercise. Country road, take me to the gym. The place where I belong, Northwest London. <laughs> I want to talk to you guys about um, what we had in the afternoon teaching today. So every week on a Tuesday, we have an hour of what's called core teaching for the F1s in the hospital. But today, instead of a teaching session, it was a session called TED, which stands for T, Eat and Debrief. So this is a session where we get together as F1s with some senior facilitators. It's a chance for us to talk about and debrief about anything that we're finding difficult in our jobs as F1s or any kind of traumatic experiences that we had, which we haven't had um, the time or opportunity to debrief and talk about with other people. So it's a really great opportunity to kind of get things off your chest, see what other people might have done in your situation or kind of work through something that may be bothering you or is upsetting. So, you know, a lot of F1 shared their experiences with uh, seniors like registrars asking us to do things and then when we don't know how to do them because we've just started work being a little bit cold or not very nice I guess and then some really stressful scenarios that some of the other F1s have been put in covering a lot of patients on the weekend without a lot of senior support and things like that thankfully I haven't really experienced much of that I've generally felt quite well supported and all of my seniors answer any of the many questions that I do have but it's quite a useful a useful session I actually had a patient who passed away a couple of weeks ago on a weekend when I was on call which was really difficult at the time I was very upset and I was actually crying um, to Alexia for a whole evening de-stressing and debriefing about that but thankfully the senior I was with at the time was very um, kind and compassionate and gave me the opportunity to kind of walk through my feelings and talk about what happened and break down the scenario step by step so that I could kind of process my feelings around that. It was very difficult, not gonna lie, and definitely a big shock as starting as a doctor as an F1 and I'm sure it's something that I'll become 
better at processing over time but this first one was um, it had a big impact on me as you can probably tell uh, with me talking about it at the moment one of the other things that i wanted to talk about today was next of kin discussion so patients that come into the hospital will have allocated to them a next of kin so someone who's kind of the designated other person for that patient so they're quite commonly needed for elderly patients to gain a collateral history if the patient has a cognitive uh, condition where maybe they're confused or they don't remember as much as uh, someone who's younger might on my specialty which is care of the elderly or geriatric medicine we spend a decent amount of time talking to next of kin so this can be be, you know uh, children sisters nephews aunts uncles whoever it may be next of kin discussions can be quite difficult because sometimes the the next of kin doesn't fully understand what's going on with the treatment of the patient maybe there has been poor communication and so they're not fully in the picture or their feelings of what they think might should happen with the patient differ from that of the medical team so sometimes these can be quite challenging um, discussions and sometimes they can be quite upsetting as well both for us as healthcare professionals and for the next of kin and patients themselves as i'm taking more and more responsibility with the patients now these next of kin discussions need to happen by me to be honest they've all gone quite well and usually what I found is that the sort of tension point relies around a lack of communication or a miscommunication that might have happened in the past. And so if you take your time to kind of explain everything that's happening, walk them through um, your thinking and your plan for the patient and what you're doing for them, I find that it tends to resolve things most of the time. Hopefully you, you find this useful. Hopefully it's giving a bit more of an insight into the medical professional side of kind of what goes on in the hospital and what goes on with patients. So yeah, that's one of my goals with these videos is to try and bridge the gap between people who don't work in the healthcare profession or patients who come into the hospital and those who do and kind of come to mutual understandings about what it is we do, why we do them, and kind of what our day-to-day -day looks like. So hopefully I'm achieving that. If there's anything else you guys would like to know or something that you think might help explain that better, please do tell me. I'm gonna head to the gym and I'll see you guys later. Catch you in a bit. There's 20 minutes until the parking restrictions are lifted in these parking spaces around me. And I thought I would be cheeky and park in one of those spaces in the hopes that I wouldn't get a ticket over the next 20 minutes. And then I see a parking enforcement officer giving a ticket to someone else. <laughs> I was like, nope, gotta go park in my usual spot. It's okay, it's not that much further. So yeah, let's go get a good session. Here. All right, all done with the gym sesh. Feels good to be back in the gym. I think it's been like three or four months that I haven't been going after I finished medical school and then over the holidays in the summer. I kind of just wanted to fully relax and not set myself to a schedule. But now that I'm not working on call for a couple of weeks, I've got some time in the evenings. That doesn't sound good. And yeah, I want to start getting back into the gym on a regular basis. I'm gonna call Alexia now, see how she's doing. Go home, eat a very big meal, a bunch of chicken and rice. Got the evening to myself because my sister's out of the house. Might play some video games. Now, those of you who have been watching the channel for some time, you're gonna be very familiar with this setup. All right, we've got some salad, some chicken and rice, a protein shake. I'm gonna throw up a video on the TV. Today we're gonna to be watching cathodic protection. These metals destroy themselves to prevent it's rust sealed. by practical engineering. Let's cast it. All right, I've finished dinner sat here and scrolled TikTok for a good 20 minutes or so. I think I'm gonna jump in the shower. It's about 9 p.m. now. And then I've got a little bit of admin to do, emails and YouTube things like that. Nothing really interesting to film for the rest of the night. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for another full day in the hospital. Peace. Good morning. I am exhausted today. I stayed up a little bit too late editing and doing some YouTube emails and admin and then couldn't fall asleep. So here we are. Today we're going for cereal as the breakfast of choice. I'm trying to switch things up. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I usually eat eggs every single day, but I'm trying to do things a little bit different now that I'm the doctor. Anyways, I'm gonna sit here and watch something while I have this breakfast and then get ready for the day. Alright, 
good morning. It is Wednesday, day three of the week. I've, I've kind of realized something. I feel like when I was working on call, when I had those 12 hour shifts, you would usually work for three or four days in a row and then have a day off and then have another three or four days in a row. And I felt like that day off after three days was so great. Whereas now the idea of doing five days in a row before a day off on the weekend sounds like it's way too long. I realize how silly that statement sounds given that everybody works a five day work week. But the point that I'm trying to make is I think I would rather work longer 12 hour shifts for three or four days in a row with a one day break in the middle than doing five days on, two days off of normal nine to five. Like I said, this is the first week where I'm working nine to five, Monday to Friday. So I'm still experiencing it for the first time. I think when it's finished, I'll be better able to compare it to the previous weeks. It's time for today's doctor hospital discussion on a drive down to work. What I wanted to talk about today was the jobs list. How you make a jobs list as a doctor in the hospital. When you are in the hospital, you will have many patients that you need to see. So sometimes this can be 10 patients, sometimes it can be 20 or even more. And each one of those patients has their own set of tasks, their own set of jobs that need to be done that day or tomorrow or whatever. And obviously you can't keep track of all of that up in your head. You need to have an organized, systematic way of writing that down, keeping track of that information so you can complete it all, or if not, pass it on to the next person at the handover that we talked about the other day. How I make this jobs list is an accumulation of things that I've picked up from other people, from my senior doctors and from my time in my final year of medical school. So I'm not reinventing the wheel or anything. I'm just taking the best bits of everything that I've seen and putting it together for what works for me. I start by taking an A4 piece of paper, folding it in half and then in half again, both lengthwise and then once horizontally. And that creates eight little rectangles on each side of the page. So up to 16 patients I can write over there. And then I'll start by in the morning, looking at what patients I'm going to be covering, what things I needed to do yesterday that I need to move on to till today. And I write in the top left corner, the name of the patient, their location, so what ward they're on, and what bed that they're sitting in. And that way I can very easily refer to any patient's name and find out exactly where they are and quickly go see them if I need to ask them a question or anything like that, or find them on the system. It also makes things quite easy from that perspective. So once I've written out the names and the locations in each of the boxes, each patient has sort of a dedicated section that I can write all the relevant notes and information for them in that place. So it makes it easy to keep them all separate on the piece of paper. Something that I've adopted from my seniors here in the hospital is getting one of those pens that have multiple colors on them. So it's like red, blue, green, and black. And I found that very helpful. I'll write the majority of information down that I need to do in black. And then things that are associated with bloods. So taking bloods from a patient, reviewing blood test results, or putting out bloods to be taken tomorrow. All that stuff I write down in red. And then things that I need to discuss or talk about in the MDT, in the multidisciplinary meeting that we have once a day, I'll write down in green. And then blue right now is kind of a random color for me, just something that I think is important that I want to stick out on me at the page. But I'm still kind of figuring out the whole color coding thing for, for this system. And so as you go around seeing patient after patient, you'll write down any pertinent information that you can't keep in your head about the examination and the conversation that you had. And then also you write down the plan or the jobs list. And so then later on, when you're sitting at your desk, you have this really nice, neat overview of all the different patients that you're seeing, what plans are yet to be done for them and what plans um, you have already completed. One of the great systems that I think is used very widely across hospital medicine is the square with like a line through it system for keeping track of your to-do list. So you'll write down a to-do list and then next to it, you'll have a square and you'll draw a diagonal line through the middle. So the useful thing about having that diagonal line is that instead of just shading the entire square when the task is done, you can shade half of the square when the task is halfway done. So for example, let's say I need to request a scan for a patient. Let's say I need to request an x-ray. When I've called the x-ray department and they've booked it in and the x-ray is going to happen, I can shade in half of that uh, square. And then when the results come back and I've reviewed them and I've documented what they say, I can shade in the full square. And then that way it keeps track of sort of half the process. So you know that there's half left and I find that quite useful. I got myself a little clipboard so I can carry around this to-do list everywhere I go, which is super, super nerdy, but I definitely find it useful. I find it helpful to be able to easily write notes when I'm at the patient bedside without having to you know, write on my hand effectively on a piece of paper or having to find some object that is good enough to write on. All right, that's it for me. I'm gonna go in another day in the hospital. I'll probably catch you guys at around lunch and update you on what's been going on so far. See you later.
Hey guys, I'm back home now. It's 6.45, I think I left at about 6 p.m., which isn't too bad. Had a really great day today, actually. I feel like with each day that passes, I'm able to take more and more responsibility for the patients that I'm looking after, and I get a bit more comfortable making decisions about planning and management, although a lot of that, almost all of that is senior led. Even making those decisions about the smaller things feels really good. And now because I'm working Monday to Friday, nine to five, there's a lot more continuity with the patients that I see day to day. So back when I was working on call with a couple of days of work, then a day off, then a couple of days of work, and in the evenings covering different wards, on the weekends covering different wards, I kind of got confused because I was seeing so many different patients from so many different places. And even on my home base ward, each day I would kind of see a random selection of patients based on wherever they needed me to be. Over the last couple of days, I've been seeing the same patients again day after day and also new ones here and there as well. So I've had a little bit more continuity, which has been really nice. You know, getting to know the patient, but then being able to remember me for having seen them yesterday, getting a little bit more acquainted with the family as well and being able to provide them updates on what's happened over the last day in the multidisciplinary team meetings, being able to be the person who presents what's been going on with this patient, what we're doing for them is really, really nice. And you know, before I wasn't able to do that because I would just see them for one day at a time, then three days later, then two days later. And you know, you'd you don't have that continuity, so you don't really know the full story. And I've really enjoyed that. It's been really good, honestly. Bit of sad news as well, actually. So one of the patients that I've been looking after for the last couple of days is dying. It's probably gonna pass away. It's hard, to, it's hard to say when, but they're not doing too well. You know, in my short time working as a doctor, I have had to certify a couple of patient deaths. And I touched briefly on the one patient who um, passed away whilst I was looking after them over the weekend, I think a week and a half ago or so, which was quite difficult. And with this patient as well, it's it's tough. You know, you become acquainted with the patient, you become acquainted with the family, and you see them every day, and you make a plan, and you give them medication, and you call different specialties for opinions, and just seeing them not get better and, and get worse day by day is, um, is really difficult. I'm still figuring out how to kind of deal with this type of stuff. I think it's, I think it is really tough, and I don't think that the right approach is to desensitize yourself or separate yourself entirely from the situation. In my, in my humble one month working as a doctor opinion, I think that would be the wrong way to go about it. And I think being somewhere in the middle is the right place to end up. But for now, I'm emotionally invested. Yeah, it, uh, it takes a toll, you know? It's not like you sit there and think about it all day, every day, every second of the day. But when you remember it, it's, uh, it's difficult. Anyways, I'm trying hard not to bring the work home with me, as the saying goes. I try and leave as much as I can at the hospital. But every now and again, it does creep up a bit. That's a bit of a serious development in this in this conversation with the camera. But I do think that's, that it's important that people realize, you know, how doctors feel about these types of situations, how they process the emotions around them, and that, you know, it, it does affect us too. It's not like doing an Excel sheet on a computer, you know, or allocating funds or losing money in a job, you know, it's, it's people's lives. And I think that has its own unique and special place in the workplace. And I think it's a it's a special thing to be able to deal with that on a day to day basis. And um, I guess know how to manage it. It's something that most people don't do. It really is for people in the healthcare profession that do experience that. So and you know, most people aren't in the healthcare profession. And I think it would be a useful insight to see how healthcare professionals feel and think about this with regards to the rest of the day, it's almost 7pm. And I want today to be a bit of a me day, I want to take some time to relax and just fully kind of enjoy this evening, I am going to make some dinner, and then I'm going to sit down and play video games either with myself or hopefully with my sister, if she comes home at a reasonable time, and um, I get to see her before we both go to bed. So that's kind of the plan for today. I'm just going to sit on my computer right now and deal with some email admin stuff and then get some food. And I'll see you guys later on. All right. Good evening. It is 9.45. So a lot later in the day now, had some dinner with my sister. And unfortunately, she can't join me for video games because she still has work to do. I thought the working hours of a doctor were bad. Lawyers working in corporate law firms definitely have it worse. Anyways, I'm going to sit down and play some video games by myself to relax and unwind a little bit before I go to sleep. Currently playing through a game called Stray, which is this sort of exploration game where you play as a cat. Very random, I know, but it has some really nice visuals, some interesting mechanics, and it's a, a fun single player sort of puzzle exploration game. If you watch the channel, you know how much I love video games, but this is what I'm playing right now, playing a different game with my sister, which maybe we'll get to see tomorrow, but I'm just gonna sit back and relax with my tea, my nice blue and white gaming lights, and play this for a little bit, and then go to sleep. So I'll see you guys tomorrow.
All right, good morning. Didn't have a chat in the car this morning because I'm running a little bit late. Just got here, I'm gonna hop onto the car, head in for another day, and hopefully see you guys at lunchtime. See you soon. Guys, what a day. Oh my goodness. So today we had two consultants and the rest of the team to go around and see all the patients. Usually the consultants just see the new patients that they haven't seen before. And then the rest of them are split amongst myself and the other doctors disproportionately with me getting less patients than the seniors and the seniors usually get the more complicated patients as well leaving the simpler ones for me but today i really felt like a team it was me the sho the senior house officer my registrar and the consultant going around seeing the patients one at a time it felt so great and yeah just really good vibes good chemistry lots of work i felt really happy everything was going well and then we went and had lunch really chill fun conversations there just bonding with the team a little bit, getting to know them a bit better and spending some time with them outside of the actual work. And then at about 4.15 p.m., I was thinking to myself, hmm, you know what? We might actually go home at 5 p.m. today. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this, this has been such a great day. You know, what could go wrong? And of course I jinxed myself. At about 4.30, I think it was, one of the patients started vomiting blood, bright red blood, which is obviously not good. And in fact, I was helping another patient at the time. Someone comes and grabs me and says, I'm not sure if you're looking after this patient, but they're vomiting blood. And I said, okay, doesn't matter if I'm looking after them or not. Let me go see what's going on. And sure enough, I went to see the patient and she had vomited blood. So I went to get my SHO, they came back, we reviewed the patient together. And you know, once a patient becomes unwell in this way, suddenly there's just a huge list of things that need to get done. You know, like now this patient needs another cannula to have two IV accesses, one in each arm. They need a new set of bloods, group and save. IV fluids, you need to have a conversation with the next of kin. She needs a PR exam, you know, observations, all kinds of things. Like one thing happens with a patient and it just generates this huge list of tasks that needs to get done and it's kind of crazy to think that at any point in our day as doctors where we've already got our own like list of things to do and we're seeing all the patients and we're treating them for whatever conditions they might have they could acutely deteriorate and then you know this additional thing gets added to our list now of course that's part of the job and it tends to happen in people who are in hospital because they're sick that's why they're there in hospital but it's just a bit you know strange to think about that this could happen at any moment in time like it doesn't have to happen at 4 30 to 5 p.m like the curse says that it will it could happen in the morning it could happen midday while we're at lunch it could literally happen anytime and so yeah just kind of that thought of always being aware and always being ready to take on a problem that might happen like this but even so it's currently 6 30 i felt like i had such a good day i I really felt like a doctor today and um, it feels so good to feel like a doctor and to be a doctor. I'm really, really happy. I'm really proud and I'm just so excited that this is my job. Like, I can't believe my job is to walk around in a hospital and treat patients instead of sit behind a desk and look at an Excel sheet or something like that. I mean, I feel so blessed. I'm really, really excited about what's to come and I hope I don't lose this excitement and I don't lose this um, sort of enthusiasm for the job, which I'm really, really enjoying right now. But anyways, that's a bit of an update about my day. I think I'm about to head to the gym actually, unless my sister messages me and says, no, come play video games at home. Mm, she says she can leave soonish. Okay, quick gym sesh. All right, in that case, let me get going. I'll catch you guys soon. Thank you for hearing me out about what my day was like. Feels good to be a doctor. That's where I'm gonna leave it. See you later. Peace. All right, team. Got home post gym and whipping up this fantastic meal over here. Gusto, why haven't you sponsored me yet? Hello. Shout out my sister. <laughs> Woo! This is what it looks like. True beauty, if I can say so myself. And yeah, has a couple minutes left. And then it'll be chill and video game time. All right, 
after a whole week almost of trying to set up video game night with my sister. She's finally free and I'm not working and I'm home early enough that we can actually do this. So the game that we're playing together on the PS5 is called Outer Wilds. This is a game based on exploring your Earth and then other planets around you in a spaceship to try and figure out why you're on this planet and why the world keeps ending every 20 minutes or so of real time. So we're having a lot of fun playing it. Noor's pretty shit at driving the spaceship, but... <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you're gonna have to redo this entire piece because you've just spoiled the game for everyone, so you need to... So as I was saying, Norris really should have driving the spaceship. <laughs> Anyways, alright, we're gonna play for like 45 minutes or so, and then go to sleep and go back to work tomorrow. Wow. Are you swimming with your spaceship now? Is that the plan? <laughs> <laughs> Is it an underwater craft? Five days filming what I've been up to. It's been a journey, but here we are. Today, we're gonna have this wonderful granola bowl and, as per usual, a cup of coffee. Let's watch something and get started. So, on today's morning chat, I wanna talk about something that happened to me yesterday that felt like a very full circle moment uh, and pretty surreal. I was asked to go down two floors to another ward to place a cannula in a patient who needed to have a CT scan with contrast, which means they needed a cannula so you could place the contrast through the venous system to show up on the scan. So I go down and I'm like preparing all my different equipment that I need to place this cannula. And one of the nurses comes up to me and says, hey, do you mind if I watch? And I was like, well, yeah, yeah, of course you can come watch. That's not a problem at all. But it felt weird to be asked. You know what I mean? Because usually I'm the one asking other healthcare professionals, do you mind if I watch? So, you know, I start walking him through all the different pieces of equipment that we need, the steps that we're gonna be going through one by one, kind of as I'm doing the cannula as well, like trying to give the tips and tricks that have been passed on to me from other people and sharing like what kind of technique has been working for me recently and just how I do a cannula. It felt so weird to be teaching this skill that A, I have been the one asking of how to do it for so many years, been like three years now of me constantly being the one to ask, how do you do this? And having other people teach me. So it felt amazing to be able to teach someone else. And the fact that I even feel like I'm in a position where I can teach others to place a cannula is amazing because even most recently in my elective in a and &E, I have a video about that from some time ago, I had a whole segment in that video where I was explaining how much I was struggling to place cannulas and how difficult it had been and how nerve-wracking it was when you, when you didn't place it and you felt like you were hurting the patient or making them uncomfortable and how that would impact your sort of feelings and performance the next time that you tried. And it's just crazy to think that on that elective, really not that long ago, earlier this year in fact, my success rate with cannulas was probably something like 20%, like one in five I would manage to place uh, correctly. And now since starting work as a doctor, like touch wood, I literally haven't missed one, which is just absurd to think about, you know? And it's just, it feels really good to be able to like now teach this skill that I was struggling with so much. It's one of the more obvious times where you can uh, directly see progression and you can feel improvement. In medicine, I feel like it's kind of difficult to measure very directly improvement or progression or increased skill and things like that. But this is one of those times where I felt like it was a lot more possible. That's it for me. I'm gonna go in for the final day of the week, Friday. Then I've got some really exciting weekend plans. I'm actually going to visit Kenji. You guys remember Kenji? my colleague in medical school who's now a doctor in a city outside of London. I'm going to see him with Georgina, who is also in, in medical school with me. And then we're gonna spend the day at his house, do some barbecuing and things like that. I'm really, really excited for it. And then on Sunday, big, big golf day with the boys, and then probably um, meet up at someone's house and just chill, relax, play video games, etc. I'll see you guys later. Hope you have a great day, whatever you're doing. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon. Peace. Alright, so it's lunch time. First, got some samples to drop off at the lab. It's been a pretty great morning to be honest. Can't complain. Alright, and that is it. Last day, Friday whole week of me vlogging my life here as a doctor. Today was a good day, quite similar to a lot of the stuff I did earlier in the week. 
I don't think anything particularly stood out to me. I'm actually really excited for next week because we're gonna have medical students on the ward. So I'm gonna have my own students uh, attached to me. My battery died in my camera, but I was saying that I'm really excited for medical students to come onto the wards next week. They're going to be assigned to me or attached to me, and I'm going to teach them how to do examinations, take histories from patients, take bloods, insert cannulas, etc. And I'm really, really excited about that. But that brings us to the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And more importantly, I hope that you learned something about what the life of a doctor is like here in the UK, what kinds of things we do, what kinds of things we think about or what we feel. Um, and I hope that it gave you a little bit of a better insight into the life of a doctor maybe than you had before. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me. I've got tons of videos uploaded already and I'm going to be making more videos in the future as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.